All right, so at this point, we've got our budget form working, we've got our new expense form working, but what I wanna do is actually show the budget somewhere on the page. If I go to the completed code over this way on my site, you can see that what we've got are these nice little cards that pop out and show us exactly what budgets we have, along with how much we've spent. In this case, not very much. So we're gonna add a lot of that kind of in progression over here. Let's start, first of all, inside of this grid large, but just outside the flex large container here. And what we want to do is add another section. So this will say H2, and we'll have existing budgets. All right, and then right below here, we're going to add another div, and this will have a class of budgets. And again, this is just for styling purposes. Now here's where we're going to actually loop through the budgets. Now, a while ago, we actually got all this stuff right here, the budgets from our use loader data uh, hook that gets all this stuff from our loader function right here. So we got our username, we got our budgets. Eventually we will add our expenses to that as well. Let me come down here though with these budgets. Now we can loop through them. So I can just loop through them like this, or we'll say budgets dot map. And then for each budget, I want it to pass it to something called a budget item. And we've yet to create this, but it needs a key since we're mapping through this. And this will be our budget dot ID. And then I actually just want to pass down the entire budget as budget. All right, just like that. So let's close this off. And then before we get yelled at, let's come over here and add this as a component. So we call this budget item .jsx. And in here, we're going to template out just budget item. We know it needs to take in a budget and that's what we'll get right here. So let's go ahead and just display maybe the budget .name right here. So I'll save that, come back over this way. And right here, let's just backspace this one to see if it'll give us an autocomplete, and it does, perfect. Let me come back up here though, just to make sure that it's where I want it to be. And not quite, all right, it's with our helper functions, I want this to be with the rest of our components. So let me save that, and you see we get existing budgets, and then both of their names showing up there. Okay, so we've got it working correctly, now I just wanna actually display these as cards. So I'm gonna jump over to the budget item, over this way. And when I do, I want to do a couple things because I don't want to type budget dot, budget dot like a 5,000 times. So let's go ahead and just uh, destructure all these from here. So we know we've got an ID, a name, an amount, and a color, at least that much on it. And I want to grab all these from my budget. Now we've got some more helper functions that we need to write eventually, but for now, let's go ahead and just start templating this out. I'm going to add a class name on here, a budget. And then below here, we're going to have a div with a class of progress text. This will be an H3, that will be our name. And again, we've just destructured that from the budget so we don't have to type budget.name anymore. And then here we're gonna say how much we've actually budgeted. So we'll say our amount, amount like this, and then budgeted. Actually, we'll do this capitalized like this, budgeted. All right, and there you go, right over here, so this much budgeted. Now, eventually we wanna format that, but we'll get around to that in a second. Next, I want an actual progress element. And here eventually we're gonna put the percentage that we have left to spend or the amount that we have spent. For now, what I wanna do is set the max here to the amount. All right, so the maximum that this progress element will take up will be the amount that we have budgeted for the particular budget. The current value then we'll set in a second. So for now, let's just say like 100 and eventually we will set that in just a moment. And then here, let's just make a note. All right, so with that said, let's come down below. We're gonna add one more thing here. That will be another div with progress text. And here will be two small tags. And by default, the CSS will actually make this smaller text already, but I've customized this as well in the actual CSS. And here we're gonna say however much we have spent. So for now, I'll just say it like that, spent. And then below this, we will say how much is remaining. All right, so if I come down here, you'll see a couple things have already happened. Number one, we are actually getting whatever 100 would be out of the 1230 or whatever 100 would be out of the 123. So this is actually showing properly. We need to do a little bit more to make it more accessible, but that's at least a good starting point. Now, the next thing we want to do is actually format these so that they're not just 1230, but it's actual dollars and cents. Now, where do we write our helper functions? Well, in our helper file. So let me open that up, helpers.js. And let's just go ahead and come down to the bottom here. We're gonna have some like formatting stuff. So the first one we wanna do is have some way to format currency. So format currency. So let's export a new function. And again, I'll set this as an arrow function. And here we'll say format currency. And here we'll take in an amount. And then there's a method that lives on this called to locale string. So as I'm getting this number in, I can then format it using this method that already is built into JavaScript. Now I can pass in a locale like in us or something like that, but if I instead pass in this first thing as undefined, then it will simply use the locale of whoever is visiting the site. 
Now what I can do is pass it an options object, and this will allow us to do a couple of things. I can set the style here to currency, and then I can actually set what kind of currency we're talking about. In this case, I'm going to set it as USD. So I'm talking about USD, that's what we're gonna be using here in this tutorial. So it should return all of this to me, and it should return it as a string. All right, so we've got our format currency. Let's go ahead and pull this one in, and let's use it right here to start with. So I'll simply say format currency, let's see if it'll find it for me. There we go. I'll pull it in and then wrap this in it. So this is the amount I'm passing in. And right here we've got our helper function. So let's just mark those out. So helper uh, functions. All right, so there we go. And now you see it's already giving us this in currency, in US currency based on my current locale, which is in the US. Now we can actually also do the exact same thing down here. But first of all, we have to calculate what we've spent. So we'll get around to that in a second. We'll also use the same thing here, except we're going to be subtracting the amount we have minus the amount we spent and then formatting that. So we'll use it in both of those places as well. And we've also got a percentage we need to write, but that is also based on whatever amount we've already spent. So the next thing we probably should do is write our helper function for the amount that we have spent. So let me jump back over to my helpers. We're going to do that. Let's see. This is technically part of our kind of data fetching area. So we'll say something like total spent by budget. Then here, this function, we'll say const equals calculate spent by budget, just so it's really clear what this is for. We're going to pass in a budget ID. So for each expense, we're going to pass that in. The first thing I want to do is grab any expenses. Now There are smarter ways to do a lot of this data fetching when it comes to dealing with large kind of queries and stuff. But for now, I'm just trying to keep it simple and focused on React, Route, or DOM. So this shouldn't be a huge deal for a little local project like that that lives in local storage. So we'll say fetch data. This is that function we wrote up top. This will be from our expenses. And if that doesn't exist, then simply pass back an empty array. Assuming I've got some expenses, in that case, what I want to do is loop through all of those and check two things. Number one, I want to double check that their ID, their budget ID, that is, matches the budget ID I passed in so that it's actually connected to this budget ID. Secondly, I want to add up all of those values to see the total amount I've spent in that budget category. So the quickest way to do both of those things in a single loop is to use the reduce method. So I'll say something like budget spent is what we'll call this. And here we'll take our expenses and we'll dot reduce over them. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the reduce method, I've done a couple of tutorials on my channel. It could be kind of confusing, but think about it like a map or a filter with superpowers. So it could do multiple things in the same loop. And then the other cool thing it can do is it can return any type of value. So it can return a number, it can return an array, it can return an object instead of like a map that basically only returns an array and then you can manipulate it after the fact. So what we're going to do is basically filter inside of this and then add up inside of this. And the only thing we'll get out of this is a number and that's it. So what we're going to do is do two things. Number one, it can take in obviously the thing it's looping through, the actual expense. But before that, it can also take in what's called the accumulator, which usually is just specified as ACC. In other words, it has access to the current value within the entire loop scope rather than just the item it's looping through. All right, let's go ahead then down here. Eventually we're gonna return the ACC, but the second thing it can take in is the kind of thing you want back. In this case, we want a number back and I want it to start. I want the ACC and I want the whole thing to start with a number and in the end to give me a number. So now inside of each loop, the very first time I come through, I just simply wanna check, does the expense have the same ID as the budget ID that I passed in? If it doesn't, then just get out of here. All right, return already. So we'll be a little bit more verbose here just so it makes sense. So we're going to check if the expense.id equals the budget ID I passed in. All right, that's going to be pretty clear with what I'm about to write, but hopefully that helps even a little bit more. So we're going to simply check if the expense, that's the exact thing we're looping through at this moment in the reduce method, if it's budget ID, if it does not equal the budget ID that I passed in to the function right here. If that's the case, then I know I don't need this, all right? So I can exclude it. So all I want to do at that point is return the ACC. That means the only thing that should get through here are things that have a matching budget ID. In other words, the expense itself had my budget selected when I hit add expense. So if that's the case, I want to simply add the current amount to my total. All right, so what I can do then at that point is return my ACC plus equals my expense dot amount. At the very end of all this, then I simply need to return my budget spent. All right, which would be the total number 
that I've spent in this budget. So let me kind of break this down a little bit more if this is confusing to you. So what we're going to do is the very first time we're going to pass in a budget ID here. This could be like a budget ID of one. All right, now these budget IDs were really long, but let's just say that's the case. First of all, it's going to grab all of our expenses, and then it's going to loop through all of our expenses. With this reduce method, we not only get access to the thing we're looping through, but a total value that we want at the very end of the whole thing. In the first loop, just like I would do with a map or a filter or anything like that, I'm going to check to say, hey, does the expense that I'm currently looping over, does its budget ID match the one I passed in? If it doesn't, then just return zero in this case the very first time. This is what it starts at, so it'll just return zero. Let's say it goes through the second item, and that one also doesn't match. Well, it'll still just return zero. The third item it checks, and guess what? This budget ID is the same one. Well, then it's going to skip all this. It'll come down here, and at that point, it's going to return zero plus equals the expense amount, which might be five or 12.3 or whatever it happens to be. This will be the total amount I've spent. The next time it were to loop through, maybe it matches it again. So it takes the 12.30 or whatever it happens to be and adds to it the expense amount from that current loop through. So this is what's happening each time we're going through all of this. And in the end, it's simply going to give me a number. That means I can come over back over to my budget item. And right below here, I can call this something like spent. And then we'll just say calculate budget by spent. And all I want to pass in is my ID. That's coming from right here. So it's my budget dot ID. That's the ID that I'm going to pass through. All right, now we're getting an error and it says fetch date, which means this probably says fetch date and it's supposed to be fetch data. Okay, all right, so there we go. Now we're gonna have a total spent. And if I come over here, right here, let's go ahead and just add this in right here. So once again, we need to format this as currency. So format as currency. And in this case, what we're formatting is spent. You can see we spent 123. Now, if I were to add another one down here, so let's add something else, we'll add $1 to it and we'll add it to groceries. Now it should go up to 223. All right, there you go. Once it finally submitted, it went to 223. Pretty cool, right? All right, now we need to figure out how much we have remaining, which is just some simple math. So here again, we will format our currency, and this will be our amount minus our spent. Well, now that we've done all that, that looks great. You might be like, oh no, what happened here? Well, you might remember that we set this to a hard-coded value of 100, so it's not actually what it's supposed to be. Um, so we need to update that here. So what I want to do next is create one more helper function over here. We'll come back down here to formatting and maybe right above here, let's do one for formatting uh, percentages. And here, once again, we'll just create a arrow function and we'll call this format percentage. And here we'll take in an amount that should be a number. And then we want to do the same thing. Now, once again, on amount, which should be a number, there lives a method called to locale string. Now this will again take in a certain locale if we want. In this case, I just want to let the person who's coming define that when they show up. So it'll just use their locale. In my case, it would be the US. And here for the style, I now want this to be a percent. And I can pass in one other thing, which is minimum fraction digits. And I'll set this to zero. Now, if I did that correctly, we should be able to come over here to the percentage. And inside here, we'll pull in our format percentage right here, which should add up to my helper uh, list up above. Then here, I want to take my spent divided by my amount, and that should now be my percentage here. Now, you can't actually see this visibly, but it, it reads out for screen readers exactly what the percentage is here. Now, what I want to show here is the actual spent, which I guess I should have done beforehand, because now I can see how much I've spent of the total. So if I were to come over here and add something like, I don't know, uh, well, something and then 75 and then we'll use that budget and there we go 75 uh, dollars out of the 123. Now if I were to inspect this I should actually get something else here so if I pull this down let's see if we can see it a percentage here of 61 percent. This is actually coming from this format percent function. Now if I were using a screen reader or something it would actually read out 61 percent here for me. Now there is one other thing we haven't yet used, which is this color right here. I actually want to dynamically set the color for each of these. And to do that, I've got to talk a little bit about the CSS. So let me first just have you do something and then I'll talk you through why we're doing it the way we are. So I'm going to come over here to the kind of the enclosing div that goes around everything, give ourselves a little bit more space so this makes sense. And then we're going to add a style uh, declaration here. And here I want to set a variable called accent. We're going to set it to the color that's come in. You can see that automatically then everything takes on this color of whatever the budget happens to be. And we set that up when we first created the budget. 
If I were to add another budget, whatever this happens to be, something here, you can see it should eventually show down here and it chooses kind of the next color in the right. Now that's a particularly ugly one, but you know, you can change around the colors if you'd want. Now, what am I actually doing here? Well, here's where I actually need to come over here and look at this index.css file that we haven't really looked at much. You'll see that I've got a bunch of different declarations on the root, one of which is this accent. Now, this is kind of like an HSL, except it's not wrapped in HSL, and that allows me to add some kind of custom um, opacities where I need to. That means wherever I use those colors, like for instance, right here, I've got to wrap them in HSL, but it also means that if I want to, I can just do a forward slash like 0.2, and now the color here for a Toastify function, if I were to add something here, you'll see is way opaque. All right, so there you can see how opaque it is. So I can kind of do opacity on the fly, which is why I've done it this way, and why I like to write my CSS this way. Now, when I come down to the actual budgets down here, you'll see that I'm doing a couple of things, but the main thing is that I'm setting a new kind of custom variable, just scope to budget here that's set to my var of accent. That means as long as I update this to be pointing to whatever different color I want, then anywhere I use backdrop all throughout here, you see that it's actually just picking up those colors. All right, so that's most of it. Let's see, there's probably something else here on the progress bar as well. There's light, there's backdrop right there. Okay, so it's using all of those all throughout. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that down, but that's basically what we're doing. And by setting one variable here locally on this, uh, this class with the class of budget, it's now scoping it just for that one little section here to where everything's using this color instead. Now, if you're interested more in how I write CSS, I do a lot of tutorials on my channel where I'm just kind of showing you what I do. I don't have any comprehensive coverage of how I write CSS, but you'd pick up enough just by watching my tutorials if you'd like to on my channel. Okay, so we've got our budget showing. The next step would be to actually show our expenses down here as well. So that's what we'll do in the next video. We'll create a little table that will loop through all of our expenses that we have and output them in the DOM.